I'm going to uh, talk about automating that bit. I mean, I, I use that same Chrome extension, but I have a slightly different problem in the sense that uh, I have a lot of stuff that I share. And sharing can be quite time consuming and, and hard. Um, on my site, I have a thousand pages of tutorial. Um, and that the, the code for that is in 160 different repos. And those, and those repositories use 50 different libraries. So juggling all that stuff manually would be kind of a nightmare. Um, and obviously, if I update a library, I want to make sure that the project that uses that library has got the source code of the library as well as its own source code. So there's no, there's no dependencies that are needed. Um, you know, so you don't download a, 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 a project and then find out you need libraries that you don't have and everything. It's all in the same, the same repository. So this is what I'm trying to, to juggle. Uh, so I have something that runs every day and automatically does all that. So we'll just take a quick look at, at that. Um, the, the steps are, first of all, it does an extraction, which takes, which looks at all scripts that I've published, which are in a particular directory, as you can see a, sn a snip of it here. And it takes those, uh, those scripts, those Google Apps scripts, and extracts out from that all the scripts that are within it. So each project will generate multiple files, usually quite, quite a number of files. The next thing it does is to resolve the libraries that are being used by those projects. So if I'm using one of my libraries in a project, it's going to go off and find out what where that is and where its source code is as well. And it's also going to create a doc, an auto documentation of the dependencies for a project, which we'll look at in a minute as well. And then the next step is to take the, you can see this, this, this last column of file names. These are the scripts that have been pulled out of a particular project. And I then want to automatically push that to GitHub for each of the 160 repositories that I've that I've got going at any one time. So that's that's the the steps, and of course that's just one thing, one trigger, one app script trigger that runs every night to do all that. So and the auto documentation, we'll look at the actual one in a minute, but you can see that in GitHub itself, it creates a list of all the dependencies for a particular project, what the project key is, the version, and all that type of stuff. So that it's easy to see everything that's being used by a particular project. And it also looks at which advanced services, Google services, I should say, that are being used in that project and, and uh, documents them as well. So that if you happen to want to set up a, a brand new project, you, you've got all the data you need here to be able to do that. So how does it work? Well, um, in my nightly trigger, I've got various settings that say where to look for scripts that are published, where to put them to. And then I've got a few other things that are needed to, to for automation that are not that relevant. But my trigger um, batch program, you can see on the right there, it's three things. It's do the extraction. In other words, pull out all the files from each project, do the libraries, which is to find out which libraries are being used by any project, and then do get, which is to push it up to, to, to GitHub. And down at the bottom, you've got the contribution history of this stuff. So it's 4,800 contributions in the last year that have all been done um, automatically without me even really noticing. So another good thing that it gives me, of course, is I can, since I've got all those files available, I can do some visualization of dependencies and so on. So this is an app script um, uh, app that's looking at what is it? It's an HTML service app using d3.js, and it's looking at all my projects, and it's looking at all the dependencies. So, for example, if I wanted to see, I don't know, um, any one of these things, take that one, I can see that this particular project is using those five libraries. And then I could maybe pick a library, that one. No, it's only using one. Let's get a different one. Um, that one see and I can see all the projects that access that particular library so as a kind of a side product of having done all that stuff in github I can now do all this kind of uh, things to dig into things that are related to each other 
So let's have a quick look at um, the GitHub repository. This is this is the repository for the actual software that we just looked at, in fact. So it's always got the same format. Um, it's got libraries. These are all the, this is all the code for all the libraries that are referenced by this particular project. So this is completely standalone. So you've got, it's pulled in the latest versions of all the source code for the libraries it looks at. And the other thing it's got, of course, the scripts is for the project itself. So these are the, each one of the projects in the IDE. Um, but very handily, it's got this dependencies file, which it's created automatically as well. And it's, so it's gonna tell you all the, uh, the script files that are in that project. It's going to tell you the references that it, it references directly. And if you want to, you can go and have a look at the source code there, what the versions are. Um, and then it's got other dependencies because of course those libraries themselves might access other libraries. So it's got those things shown here and it's got whichever Google services it's using. So that's kind of it as uh, it's really um, maintenance free. I really just don't have to do anything much to this at all. The only thing that happens is that occasionally um, Google change their, their dependencies, how their dependencies work. Because the way, if you if you noticed it went off to figure out, I was using, happened to be using the drive advanced service for that. It had to go off and find out which, into the inside of uh, Google Apps Script IDE, you find out which ones were being referenced. And they changed that from time to time. So that sometimes you need to do a little bit of a hack to figure out how that works when they change it. Um, but aside from that, it's, it's, uh, it's fairly maintenance free. And the final thing is that if you want to, you'll notice that of my three steps, the last one was to push it up to Git, this do Git. Um, if you want to use the Git client itself, as opposed to automatically doing that, then you can just run, instead of doing that, you can, you can do a Git push uh, in the normal way that you would do if you had been doing this manually. And that's it. Any questions? I, I think there is general um, uh, wonderment at, at what you've been able to achieve, Bruce. Partic for me, um, you know, you, you've been able to visualize your dependencies as well, I think is um, uh, ticks huge boxes for me. Um, but yeah, uh, but having said that, the, 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 the doing that kind of stuff is really quite easy if you've got the input files that allow you to do it in the first place, because each, um, project starts with a thing I call info.json, which describes the project in mammoth detail. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can just use that to, to visualize. So I'm not actually looking at it. Uh, when it does that visualization, it's not really looking at the projects. It's looking at the info.json's for every project. It, so is there much, it, in terms of the info.json, is that something that you manually have to write yourself? Or? No, no, that, 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 gets, that gets created automatically as well. The only thing you need to do is that small setup that I showed you in one of those slides that said where your files are. Yeah. Uh, so where your files are and how to log into GitHub and you're done. Uh, impressive stuff. I think it's nice as well to um, see the two different approaches here that you know Steve was talking about at, you know, at managing a, a, a team environment where um, you're working on code together. I suppose with your example, Bruce, it, it works because you're the single developer, so. Well, actually I use um, Steve's method as well for when I'm developing um, so that I can have test and development and all the rest of it, even though typically I'm the only person working on it. Um, but then once I've got a production version, that goes into my published script. My published script place is the equivalent of production that Steve was showing. Um, and then that's that's what automatically gets replicated to, to those repositories, not the working stuff. Mm -hmm.